So thank you, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, could we remove? Okay, thank you. A visual relation is a relation that holds between objects. For example, in this image, we have a person, we have a surfboard, and there is a visual relation between the person and the surfboard, which can be described by the predicate hold. In this work, we consider visual relations between two objects and formulate it as a triplet of the form subject, predicate, object. The problem we are trying to solve is called visual relation detection. Given an image as input, it consists in learning to detect and localize relations between the objects in the image. For example, in this image, we want to localize relations such as person stand on surfboard, person carry person, person above surfboard, dog on surfboard, and person taller than dog. We can encounter three types of visual relations, verbs, prepositions, and comparatives. So why solving visual relation detection? The first motivation is image search. To retrieve images with complex queries, such as children playing chess under a tree, we need a good understanding of visual relations. So here, children playing chess and children under a tree. Another motivation is human-robot interaction, where the robot should understand natural language instruction involving in particular visual relation, so as to be able to interact with the environment. The task of visual relation detection presents two main challenges. The first one is due to the diversity of visual relations. First, two objects, such as person and skateboard, can interact in many different ways. For instance, a person can be on top of skateboard, he can be sitting on it or holding it. Second, the same relation, on, can describe various interactions between different objects, such as clock on tower, person on horse, or plate on table. The second challenge is due to the difficulty of getting annotations at box level. Consider these two images. Here are all the boxes to annotate to get box level annotation for some of the objects in the image. That is a lot, but still feasible. Now, here are all the annotations you would have to produce to annotate the relation between all the pairs of boxes in the image. Such box level annotations are very challenging to, to produce. Our work is related to visual semantic alignments that finds correspondences between fragments of natural language and image regions. Learning relations from pre-extracted triplets has been studied to solve tasks such as image retrieval, human object interaction, or visual relation detection more recently. Here, we wish to learn visual relation in the form of triplets, but using only weak supervision for relations. Let me explain our method. The input is a set of images with candidate pairs of boxes given by pre-trained object detector. At training time, we have image level triplets, but we do not know the correspondences between the triplets and the pair of boxes. The goal is to learn a separate classifier for each predicate. At test time, we want to generate the most probable triplet for each candidate pair of boxes. For example, we want to label this pair of box as person sit on skateboard, this one as person hold bike, and this one as person ride bike. To learn visual relations, we first need a visual representation for the pair of boxes. For this, we first compute the appearance of the subject box using a convolutional neural network trained for object detection. We compute the appearance of the object box similarly, and then, we encode a spatial configuration between the pairs of boxes and quantize these vectors, this vector into spatial clusters using a Gaussian mixture model. What is learned by the spatial clusters? Here, we display examples of pairs of boxes quantized to the same spatial cluster since the query at the top left. And here are the images they correspond to. So you can see that the spatial cluster are able to capture subtle information on the relative spatial configuration. 
So we have a way to encode the visual representation for the pairs of boxes. And now, given image level triplets, such as person hold bike, we want to learn a classifier for the predicate hold. How do we do this? If full supervision was provided, we know exactly the pair of boxes in the relation person hold bike. We can put this information into a binary vector Z and solve a rich regression problem to find classifiers W that map the visual representation X for the pairs of boxes to the assignment vector Z. The objective to minimize is the sum of a discriminative loss and a regularizer. Now, if only image level labels are provided, we do not know the localization for the triplets. So the vector Z is unknown and needs to be inferred as well. For this, we adopt a discriminative clustering approach to jointly optimize over Z and W. And the information conveyed by the image level labels intervenes as constraints on the space of possible Z. For instance, the image level triplet person hold bike imposes at least one of the candidate pairs in the image to be assigned to the hold label. This can be encoded as a linear constraint on Z. Now, if we have more predicates to learn, then Z becomes a matrix with other constraints on its column. We group all of these constraints on Z and jointly optimize W and Z with a variant of the Frank Wolf algorithm. So now I will show some results. We tested our model on the visual relationship detection dataset. Our weekly supervised model is able to detect different types of relations, spatial relation, action involving a human. We are able to make accurate detections in, in, in images involving multiple people. Also, our model can detect unseen triplets, which are combinations that have not been encountered at training time. In terms of numerical results, we obtained state-of-the-art results at the time of submission. In particular, we had a big improvement on the unseen triplet set. So for more recent results, check also these works at the conference. One issue with evaluation is caused by missing annotations. For example, here is a detection produced by our model, grass under person. It is a valid detection, but it's counted as an error. And the reason is that if you look at all the ground truth annotations available for this image, our detection, grass under person, is missing in the ground truth. Such, casing, such cases of missing annotations happens very often in current data sets and introduces noise in evaluation. So this motivated us to introduce a new evaluation data set. Sorry. So this new data set, Unreal, is made of unusual relations, such as dog ride bike or car entry. And because these relations are rare in images, we can exhaustively label them, and the noise due to missing annotation is reduced. Besides, evaluating on the unusual relations of Unreal enables to test generalization because these triplets are also rare at training. We evaluated our model for retrieval on unusual relations on Unreal and showed improvements of our model compared to two fully supervised baseline. So to finish with, let me show you some qualitative results of retrieval for unusual queries. For example, let's query building have wheel. We show the detected subject in blue, the detected object in red. The two first images are top score positives, and in the last column, we show a top score negative. So here, you can see that the common failure mode is wrong object detection. Let's query another one, dog ride bike. So here, uh, a failure mode is challenging spatial configuration. So I thank you very much for your attention. The code and data sets are available online, and I hope to see you at my poster. So we have time for questions. Hi. Uh, if you would replace the rich regression with last so would it give you like a smaller set of more informative features in the end? Like what is still the representation? Uh, so I didn't get the first part of the sentence. Uh, in your optimization, you use the uh, regression yes. with L2 norm. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, if you would replace it with last regression of L1 norm, which uh, as byproduct yeah. give you kind of feature selection, wouldn't be a little bit simpler I, to work with uh, distilled features? So, uh, we didn't try this. Um, I think, so there's also a problem, maybe L1 uh, loss is not necessarily uh, a good idea here because you have a non-mutually exclusive relation, so you don't necessarily want to want to constrain, uh, to have a sparse constraints. But I, I, di I didn't try this. Thank you. I have a question. Uh, yes. How do you deal with uh, prepositions in front or behind uh, in the context of uh, depth and uh, perspective when uh, you don't have to any assumptions about the size of the object or the viewpoint? So this model is uh, very general and you can deal with uh, action or special relation and for the preposition, um, um, the only the special feature will be active probably, and the appearance feature will not necessarily help, but you can deal with it with uh, her special feature because it's, uh, uh, it, it allows you to encode a very subtle uh, information about the relative uh, configuration of the box. Um, it can take into account uh, like the size of object, overlap, and I can, well, okay, I can give you okay. more information at the post. Uh. Let's thank the speaker for a great talk.